the last video, I talked about the first three Street Fighter games. Now we get into part two and talk about the next three games. It is December 9th, 1992, and we see the release of Street Fighter II Hyper Fighting. I'm surprised that we got two Street Fighting games in the span of less than a year. Changes made include faster gameplay, additional color for each of the characters, and new moves for seven of the 12 characters. The special moves also require a little more precise timing, which adds to the challenge. Makes me wonder why Guile never got a new move. Maybe some fighters don't need another move. This was also the last game to use the CP Arcade System Board. The CP System was an arcade system board developed by Capcom to run arcade games on removable ROM cartridges. The World Warrior, Champion Edition, and Hyper Fighting were all developed on the CPS-1 and each game was successful. The CPS-1 system also allowed multiple games to run, whereas most boards only allowed one game to be played. Just like all good things, there were problems. The board was plagued by bootlegs and there were so many versions of Street Fighter 2 that it was out of control. During the CPS-1's run, Capcom got to work on the CPS-2, which eliminated a lot of the problems the CPS-1 made. Less than a year after Hyper Fighting's release, Nintendo and Sega each got their own version, and each game was bundled with both Hyper Fighting and Champion Edition. This is something I should have mentioned in Part 1, but I'll mention it now before I forget. The SNES and Genesis games had quite a makeover in order to meet hardware specifications of each system. The SNES version had all blood removed due to Nintendo's strict censorship policy. Another change was the animations walking backwards were altered from the arcade. I could go on, but there's too much to talk about, and me going over each detail of the console games isn't what this video is about. There isn't much else to talk about. This is the best game thus far and earns every bit of a 4.5 stars out of 5. We now move on to October 1993 and the release of Super Street Fighter 2. This is the first game in the series to use the CPS-2 system board. This allowed for more advanced graphics and audio and also solved the problems that the CPS-1 had. Additionally, this is the first game to utilize Q-Sound, which allowed for three-dimensional sound algorithm in any game that utilized Q-Sound. Wow, I'm getting way off topic, but at least I got the chance to talk about the hardware changes. Back to the game on hand, if there's one word that can describe this game, it's makeover. For starters, the HUD stages and character portraits got a huge makeover. Another new feature now is that each character has eight color palettes. This would be used when four cabinets were linked together to play a single elimination tournament mode. Like Hyper Fighting, some of the characters received an additional move, like Ryu can now fire a red Hadouken, Ken gets a flaming Shoryuken, Zangief gets an atomic buster, and M. Bison has the devil reverse. The biggest feature to the series is the introduction of four new characters. We get T-Hawk, a Native American from Mexico whose land was taken from him by Shadaloo, DJ, a Jamaican kickboxer looking for inspiration for his next song, Fei Long, a Hong Kong movie star who wants to test his martial arts against other fighters, and Cammy, a mysterious girl with ties to M. Bison. In addition, each of the boss's endings feel more individual, and Chun-Li's ending has two branches. You'd have to play the game to see them. I could go on, but you get the point. This game gets 4 stars out of 5 due to it being too similar to Champion Edition. Now we move on to March 23rd, 1994 and the release of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. The gameplay is similar to Hyper Fighting, but with some new features. The most notable feature is the super meter on the bottom corners of each screen. To build up the meter, you have to make sure that your attacks connect to your opponent, and combos also help. Speaking of which, you can now juggle your opponent in midair and add more attacks. You can also reduce the damage from throws, or as they call it, throw softening. Despite all the new features, does it make the game any good? While I'm not against trying new things, I can also say that having these features isn't really necessary, and you're really just getting more of the same if you took these features away. Another thing I've noticed is that the second opponent is overcharged and can beat you without effort. Intentional? Or an overlooked bug? No matter, this game is recommended if you're into crazy gameplay. This game gets 3.5 stars out of 5. Stay tuned for part 3 when I talk about the three Street Fighter Alpha games.